Hello and welcome to another short video and in this one we're going to cover how to do fall damage. So I'll just, we'll get straight into it, I'll just quickly go over what I've set up beforehand. All we've got in the scene is some geometry so you can see that stuff is actually happening because obviously if you've just got a flat plane or a skybox it's hard to tell what's going on. And then we have a player, he's not really a player, there's no character controller, with a capsule collider, a rigid body, an audio source and a player script. So I'll just quickly show you what we've got going on. If I press T, we get a hurt sound, doesn't do anything, there's no health or anything like that. And if I press space, we launch him in the air. It's kind of like a jump, but higher. So in the script, I've hidden most of the stuff here because most of it's not relevant to this. I haven't done all of this on camera because your player controller will almost certainly be different to how I do my player controller. So I've just basically implemented the bare minimum we need to do fall damage. So as you can see, I've got a shake function here. This is ripped straight out of my 21 tips video, as is the mouse look. That's just to make things so that we can look around a bit while we're floating through the air. Take damage. All it does is call the shake script and play this, the hurt sound effect, which is me, by the way, if you want voice acting skills, just let me know. And then finally, there's the check ground, which is at the minute, it's just a ray cast straight down and it sets a grounded bull, which is up here hidden in this lot. So we're going to need to do some stuff in here later on. So that's why I've shown you this one. But the rest of this stuff we can basically ignore. It's just for the sake of the video. It's just to make everything else work. So basically, all you would need to do with your own player controller is have a way of putting your code into the ground check. So if you're using the Unity standard first person character controller type thing, you would need to work around that. But if you're writing your own, obviously you can do what you want with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bull, which we're just going to call was grounded. And it's exactly what it sounds like. At the end of every fixed update, we're just going to say was grounded equals grounded. And then what that allows us to do is every update, we can check whether we are grounded now, which is that's what's happening here. And then we can check that against whether we were grounded in the last frame. And if we weren't grounded in the last frame, but we are now, that means we landed like we were in the air and we're no longer. So then what we're going to do before we update was grounded is we're going to say if we weren't grounded the last frame. So if not was grounded and we are grounded this frame. And if both those things are true, take damage. We just give that a quick try. <laughs> okay, you can see there's a slight bug there because he, he kind of bounces a little bit. That's just because of, I rushed the setup of the character controller. But as you can see, he's in the air, <laughs> he lands, and he hurts. Obviously, we don't want them to get hurt any time they land because you could just be stepping off something very small. You could be jumping. So the next thing we're going to do is implement a way of determining how far we've fallen. So we're going to create a new bull, which is called was falling. And we're going to create a float, which we're going to call start of fall. And then somewhere down here, we're going to do a bool, but this time it's going to be a get bool. So bool is falling, get, and then we're just going to return grounded and, and oh, sorry, uh, for this to work, you're going to need a reference to the rigid body of the controller. Of course, you can work out the velocity without a rigid body if you're wanting to do things that way. You just need to keep track of your velocity each frame or your position each frame and compare it to the position in the last frame. But we're going to do it with the rigid body. So rigid body dot velocity dot y is less than zero. So if both those things are true, it will return true. And if they are not, it will return false. And all it's saying is we are oh, sorry, that wants to be not if we're not grounded. So if we're not grounded and our velocity y value is less than zero, that means we're falling downwards, then we are falling. So that's all that does. And then up here where we we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to say if we were not falling in the last frame, but we are falling in this frame, then start fall equals transform dot position dot y and then obviously we need to update was falling with is falling so was falling equals is falling and actually we didn't want to delete that last line but we'll just type it back in quickly so if not was grounded and is grounded then take damage but this time it's not is grounded sorry that is grounded but this time we're going to go down to take damage and we're just going to do a little debug dot log and we're going to say player fell and then we need the trans uh, we need the start fall position start fall minus transform dot position dot y so we're subtracting the current player y position from the start of the actual fall uh, let's just stick a, a little thing on there units i guess we'll do so let's get console up and i will 
unmaximize it on play so that we can see the console. <laughs> okay. Now if we launch it, and by the way, there's no ground check on this launch thing, so the more I press it, the higher we get. <laughs> you can see we did have briefly player fell 24 units before he bounced and then fell half a unit. So the next thing we're going to do is obviously you wouldn't have that problem at all if your character controller was, you know, had a bit more thought put into it than the one that I've hashed together for this video. But we can actually fix that in this video because the other thing we're going to want to do is, again, like I said before, you don't want him to take damage any time he touches the ground. You could just step off of a really small slope and for a brief frame or a couple of frames, leave the ground and you don't want to be taking damage in that situation so now we're going to add a public variable well i don't suppose it really matters whether it's public because this is just showing you the method but public float minimum fall this is probably a better thing to call that but i'm going to go with minimum fall and i'm going to say 2f so this is entirely dependent on what your game mechanics are and how your player controllers work but basically this is if the fall is less than this then we don't take any damage. So what we're going to do here is at the top of our take damage function or wherever you decide to put your code, we're going to say, first off, float fall distance equals, and then we just need this here. And then we're going to enclose all of this in an if fall distance is greater than minimum fall. Obviously, we don't need this here. Now we can just use fall distance. Let's try that. So now, even though the player is still technically bouncing when he hits the floor, we shouldn't get that <laughs> because all of those bounces will be below the threshold. There we go. We can go higher up. And he's fallen 20 units. And that's... That's basically it. And then obviously from from that distance, you then work out like how much damage, whether you would have a set number for how much damage your player would take, like how much health he loses there, or whether you scale it with the distance, that's entirely up to you. But yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> we have fall damage. So yeah, that was uh, just a quick video on how to do fall damage. I, the main reason I've done this is because people keep asking me to do like a survival mode thing for the Minecraft series. And really that's a very specific video that's only going to interest people who are doing the Minecraft series. We're on like part 29 or something next. So I would much rather show you all the individual parts in videos like this than do one video on how to do survival mode in Minecraft. So yeah, that's that's the end of this video. And all that's left to do is to thank my amazing Patreons. Of course, all of you get thanks, but the special thanks go to the Sugar Daddy slash Mama Tear Patreons, Dave Maldine, Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, Mr. Drunken Dragon, and Julian. And that is it for this video. I will be back soon with another video. Oh, the, the next video will probably be the update on the card game, which has been available to the Patreons for a week or so now. That will be going live on the main channel. And then after that, we'll see what comes next. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.